gas orifices. A gas orifice is used in a burner and it holds the burner gas input rates to a specific level. Okay, so basically what it really is is just another form of metering device that we have inside a a, a gas furnace. Okay, so we have a regulator which is regulating gas pressure from the street into the home. Uh, we may have multiple regulators in that gas line depending on how uh, high the pressure may be. Uh, we may have a regulator from the street into the home and then we may have another regulator that's inside the home which regulates it down to a safe uh, pressure for a gas furnace to to operate. We also have our gas valve which is also a, uh, a form of of regulator where we're taking a gas pressure and only introducing and allowing so much through to our manifold and then we have the actual gas orifice which is now regulating the amount of gas to each individual burner so inside the orifice it's basically constructed uh, with various spuds and various angles uh, for the approach of approach to the orifices are they are um, are used so depending on the construction of the burner the amount of gas that is needed for each burner we're going to have a specific design uh, for that particular uh, burner for a particular furnace and that ratio of the orifice the uh, diameter and its depth will differ between uh, what we're dealing I mean we can have furnaces that only have uh, maybe three burners so they'll have three orifices we can have a gas boiler who can have 15 burners uh, so therefore we'll have 15 different orifices that are that are on that particular furnace or boiler but we have three types of orifices that we will run into in in the HVAC industry we're going to have our fixed orifice adjustable orifice and then we'll have what is called a universal orifice so the fixed orifice is the most common type of orifice that you're going to uh, most likely run into uh, in residential um, type settings okay they consist of a small drilled opening in the orifice spud and they're sometimes formed by a laser piercing uh, by laser piercing into the material or which is difficult to drill a lot of our orifices that you are dealing with are brass okay so we can't really take wrenches to them and, and try to uh, get them out we have to do it very very carefully uh, we should never try to uh, drill through them or try to stick anything through um, the actual orifice itself because what can happen is, is if we were to do that and and try to put something through that orifice we have now altered the the precise uh, hole that was drill through it and by doing so we can actually overfire a burner and we can cause damage to the um, to the furnace itself okay so anytime that we're dealing with a fixed orifice and we suspect that it is um, plugged or, or not operating properly we're going to use an adjustable wrench of the correct size and very carefully remove it as you can see that it, it is threaded okay so we can take it out and we're going to use um, maybe nitrogen or maybe an air compressor to blow through the orifice so that we do not damage that precisely dr uh, drilled hole that is through it then we'll have our adjustable orifice okay you could look at this uh, picture and you could kind of maybe see where these are going to be found 
they're going to be found on your gas grills, your propane gas grills. They're going to be found on your gas stoves in a home. So basically all these are are mainly gas valves that we are able to adjust. We by turning the knob we are able to increase or decrease the gas flow to the burner manually. They are made up of two two parts. We have a moving part and we have a stationary part. The movable hood is a needle inside the orifice spud is stationary. The orifice in a spud or hood moves with respect to the needle and by moving that orifice hood closer or further away from that tapered needle point the area of opening is changed to adjust the actual gas flow. Okay, the fixed portion of it is actually stationary. Okay, and a movable needle is screwed into and out of the orifice opening to adjust the opening size in either type of orifice. Your gas rate can be adjusted from zero uh, with the needle tight against the orifice raw or to some full rate. The full rate is set by the size of the orifice with no needle in it. Then you have your universal orifice. These universal orifices are actually designed to operate with either natural gas or propane. Yeah, I mean, again, they are mainly used in, in ranges. What you may see if you get into appliance repair, you may actually see um, these on your truck where you maybe a person had natural gas in their house and they want to convert it to to propane or, or vice versa. What you're going to wind up doing is you'll probably have a universal orifice in there where you can just easily uh, install and adjust the gas rates to uh, coincide with the, the burner outputs. Okay, the universal orifice is a combination of a fixed orifice and an adjustable orifice. The needle is, the, is in a fixed position and the orifice hood is what actually moves freely. The needle as an orifice, has an orifice that's drilled through it and it is sized for LP operation. Okay, so to operate the range in LP gas, the orifice hood is screwed down until the tapered needle point is completely blocking off the orifice in the hood. And then your LP gas rates is then set by the size of the fixed orifice through the needle itself. To adjust LP rates, the size of the orifice through the needle is then changed. And this is done by either drilling out the pin orifice or replacing the needle with a smaller one. Okay, so there's a little bit of construction that has to happen with these. Okay, for natural gas operation, however, the orifice hood is screwed all the way, is, is screwed away from the actual needle. And then the gas flow through both the fixed orifice in the needle and through the opening between the needle and the edge of the orifice. So in regards to uh, these types of orifices, we need to be able to size them based off of the gas flow rate that we need to have the proper amount of BTUs for each burner. So in order to do that, you got to have these three things. You got to know the orifice size, the gas pressure forcing the gas through the orifice, and the specific gravity of gas. So again, going back to a lot of this that we've covered so far is you need to know what you're dealing with. Is it natural gas? Is it propane? We need to know the specific gravity of those two is because we need to know that natural gas is lighter and we need to know that natural gas propane is heavier. So therefore we need to know what gas pressure we're going to have to deal with to get the proper amount of BTUs out. Okay, change to any one of those three things is going to change its gas flow rate and it's going to change how an actual burner is going to operate. So remember, less gas always flows through the orifice than the theoretical amount. What the heck does that mean? Well, 
we may be looking at a gas orifice that is sized for a specific amount of, of BTUs, but in some ways we may not be actually getting all of those BTUs out of it because we are trying to send X amount of gas through a precisely drilled hole. So we deal with friction loss through an orifice because we can only send so much out. So what we try to do in this industry is we try to calculate and we try to size our orifices to get as close to the BTU output that is rated on a furnace or stove as possible. So measuring gas flow rates of an appliance are checked by metering the gas flow. So to obtain an accurate check of the rate for one gas appliance, all other gas appliances and pilots must be turned off during the check. Okay, so the best way to do this is leave your maybe your truck keys on top of an appliance uh, you are turning off so you remember to turn it back on. We need to do each, anytime we are calculating gas flow rate of an appliance, we need to be calculating the gas flow rate for that one appliance. So if there is other appliances in the home or business, we literally need to go and turn them off. We need to go and shut the gas line off to those appliances so that we can just focus on the one appliance that we're working on so that we can get an actual accurate meter reading of what is actually happening in that particular appliance. For most orifice spud designs, orifice sizes taken from the, the chart should give input rates very close to the desired rate. And if an orifice uh, must be replaced uh, with a flat bottom one or the rate obtained may be low for the orifice size selected. So we got to look at, at the orifice size. A lot of our orifices are going to have a number stamped on them. That number on them is the actual orifice size, the size of the hole. Okay, we need to look at our orifice sizing chart that may come with the uh, appliance and compare the orifice size to that burner input rate and see what uh, it calculates to and see if it's actually workable and feasible for the particular application that we're dealing with. If the rate is not close enough to the desired rate, it may be altered or adjust by adjusting gas pressure slightly if we have to. I mean, we do have the ability to adjust gas pressure at our gas valves. We do have the ability at our regulators to adjust it if we need to. If we need to increase the gas pressure a little bit or decrease it, Okay, so we do have flexibility in gas lines and in furnaces to make adjustments to um, the gas flow rates to our burners and to our appliances. So to measure gas flow, the first thing that you need to do is you need to turn on only the appliance you are interested in and go to the gas meter. You are going to use a watch with a second hand and count the number of seconds it takes for the dial to revolve one time. Look at the meter and find out how many cubic feet is used in this one revolution. And then you are going to use that following formula here. Cubic feet per revolution times 3600 divided by the time of revolution in seconds. Okay, so the 3600 is the number that is converts seconds to hours. So for example here, we have a meter using a half cubic foot of gas per revolution and it takes 15 seconds to revolute one time with that furnace running. So if we plug in our numbers, we see that we have 0.5 and we times that by 3600 and then divide it by 15 we come up with this piece of equipment using 120 cubic feet per hour of gas to burn. 
knowing that number, we can now use a gas orifice sizing chart to see whether or not our orifices are sized properly. We can see if our gas pressure is sized pro um, is is set properly. So it's a good key uh, to do. See what you're actually dealing with. Another example here is, okay, we have a, a meter that uses two cubic feet per revolution on the dial, and that time is 60 seconds for that furnace to run. So again, we use uh, the, the, uh, the, the formula, and we come up with 2.0 times 3,600 divided by 60, and we again come up with about 120 cubic feet of gas per hour, CFH. Heat input rates all kind of culminate into what we are just uh, discussing. The heat input rate would be found by measuring the gas flow and then multiplying it by the BTU value of gas that we are using. There are tables that have been created to help calculate your gas flow rate. So it's not like you have to constantly take out your calculator and, and, and figure all of this out. A lot of your furnaces in the literature itself that comes with it, we'll have some charts in there to kind of help you figure some of this stuff out.